G'day guys, my name's Nick and this is my channel Low Range Nick where I do videos about full driving, accessory fitting and maintenance for your full drive vehicle. So in today's video I'm going to show you guys all the steps necessary to fit an LED light bar to your full drive. So here I've got an Oxbeam 42 inch LED light bar. So this light bar is going to be fitted to the roof of the MUX, so hanging off the roof racks up there. So I've got a couple of brackets that will make the job easier and I'll also show you guys a couple of tips and tricks with the wiring. So whether you're installing a 42 inch light bar to the roof or a 24 inch light bar to your bull bar, the steps are very similar. Alright guys, so as I said before, this is the Oxbeam 42 inch 5D Pro Series combination dual row LED light bar. So as you can see, it has your standard light bar on the sides, which is your spread, and it has four individual spot beams in the center with projectors. So what the projectors do is they enable those little LEDs to project even further than normal and they actually give it a much brighter and clearer light. So this light bar is constructed of dye aluminium alloy and it is also IP68 waterproof. So this thing can pretty much take anything you can throw at it off-road. Um, it's going to be a pretty tough light bar and it's also going to project a hell of a lot of light with these projector beams in the center. So I'm pretty keen to get this fitted to the MUX so let's get stuck into the install. So the first part of the installation is to fit our light bar brackets to the roof. So because I'm installing this light bar on my roof racks, I've decided to get the Yakima brand Lighten Up light bracket. So this light bar bracket is specifically made for the Yakima roof racks, which is what I have on the MUX, and it will make the installation very easy. So I would also recommend if you have a certain brand roof rack system on your car, that you go get the same brand light bar bracket kit to fit to the roof of your vehicle. It'll just make the job a lot easier and also you know that the brackets are going to be high quality and fit correctly. The first step is to assemble our light bar roof rack brackets and then we can fit these to the roof. So now I've got my roof rack brackets assembled. I've just put a little tower down here just to protect the roof from any scratches. And I've got all my nuts and bolts and fitting hardware up on the roof. So now I'm ready to fit these brackets to the roof rack. So I did just have to put a little bit of rubber tape on the inside of these brackets, which comes with the kit, just to protect the um, brackets and the roof rack uh, when we're fitting them so they don't scratch them. So now I can fit these brackets to the roof racks. So the first step is to get the little captive nuts and I need to push these into the roof rack and slide them along to the right spot. So basically all I do is just put them in, push them down, twist, and the spring underneath holds that nut up in the rail, so it makes it real easy to put the brackets on. So I'll just put two of those in, slide them along to roughly the right spot, and now I can put my brackets over the top and get them lined up. So now I can get my little tamper-proof bolts and put these through. Just try and line them up. So all of these bolts supplied by Yakima actually have a little bit of Loctite on them so that means when you tighten these up they're not going to come loose. So I do want to leave this bracket a little bit loose just so I can move it along depending on where the light bar is going to sit. So because I've got the awning on this side the brackets actually protrude a little bit inwards so that limits me to the size of light bar I can fit on the roof because I can only get the bracket to sit up to here. So I measured it with a tape measure and I thought I could fit a 42 inch light bar. So that's the light bar I've chosen to use. If you didn't have an awning on here, you could probably fit a, a larger light bar to the roof racks. Um, but for this roof rack system, and because I have an awning fitted, a 42 inch light bar is the perfect size. So same deal. Put these little captive nuts in. There we go, gotcha. And same deal, put our bolts in, line them up. These are nuts and bolts from the um, Oxbeam light bar kit and also from the Yukima roof rack um, kit. I'm not sure which ones I'll need yet, so I'll just bring them all up here and get them ready. 
So I'll just bring the light bar up now. We can get it fitted. Here it is. So it definitely pays to have a towel down on the roof so you can put everything up here. So I'll just slide these brackets out to roughly where I'm going to need them. So I'll just fit the light bar to these brackets now. So I've ended up using the Yakima Loctite bolts and um, their spring washers and washers because they seem to fit pretty well. And they've also got that little bit of Loctite on it which will mean that um, this will not loosen over time. There we go, it's fitted to the roof rack now. So now we just need to get the right angle, slide it along, get it in the middle, align it properly and tighten everything up. So I've got my Oxbeam 42 inch 5D Pro Series light bar fitted to the roof of the MUX now. And I'm pretty excited to get this thing wired up and tested out. Now, where the light bar is sitting, I think it's going to be a great location because it's sitting a little bit further back than some um, with a platform. They might sit out a bit further. So what that means is because it sits further back, hopefully the beam will cut off a little bit further so it doesn't get too much glare on my bonnet. So I'm pretty excited to check it out and see how bright this thing is. But first, we've got to get it wired up. So once we've wired this up together, I'll show you guys exactly how to get it perfectly level and get the most amount of light out of your light bar. This is the wiring harness that comes with the Oxbeam uh, light bar. So you can see that it's got really thick wiring, heavy duty wiring, and it's also got waterproof plug connectors, which is really important. So it comes with a little switch and also a little joint here so we can push the wiring through the firewall. So basically what we have here is the relay. We've got a power earth fusible link here. And then we've got the plug which goes to the light bar and also a switch which can go into the dash or inside the car somewhere. So I'm pretty keen to get this wired up, so let's get stuck into it. So what I usually do before fitting any wiring harnesses to the vehicle is I just mock up sort of where it's going to run and where the relay is going to mount. So I've decided to mount it over here. It's nice and close to the battery and it's also easily accessible. So I can fit my power and earth to the battery. I can run my light bar wiring across there and up the windscreen. And also, I can run my little switch easily down through the firewall grommet down here and into the vehicle. So the reason why I've decided to run the wiring down this side of the vehicle is because I wanted the wiring to be a little bit hidden with the snorkel in the way. And so I can easily run it just up here under the trims. So it's going to be a little bit more hidden and it's just going to look a little bit neater. So now I've figured out where I'm going to run my wiring. First step is to mount the relay. So I'm just going to take the 10mm out of this little filler neck. I'm going to use that to mount my relay. So now that relay is mounted nice and sturdy, now I can run the rest of the wiring. So I'll just get my 13mm socket and I'll loosen off my little accessory terminals on my battery. Take off the washers. Now I can fit the power and earth to the battery. So what I like to do is fit the power and earth first, but just pull out the fuse so you can fit that later. So that means there's no power going through this system. So when you run stuff through the firewall, you're not going to risk arcing anything out. And we can just run our power and earth to the battery. That can sit on there. Put our washer on and that. We'll run this underneath here and up to the battery there. So we'll tighten these up, nice and tight. And now just remember that you have taken the fuse out because later on when you jump in the car after finishing the job, you might go to flick your light bar on and you'll be running around thinking, oh, what have I done wrong? but you have to remember that you've pulled the fuse so it's safe to work on. So now that we've got power and earth connected, taking the fuse out, we can run our wiring over to the light bar. So I've decided to run it up the back of the firewall there with some of my breathers. I'm gonna put some split tubing over it and just run it along the back and then up to the light bar.
So I'm just going to pull out this plastic little trim here just so I can run the wiring down in behind it. So it actually comes out quite easy. So you just push down on it and it just clips up under beneath this um, metal side trim. And then you just pop this side out like that and it comes out real easy. So now I've run the wiring from the relay across the back of the engine and zip tied it all up. I've got a little bit of excess wiring here. So I'll just run the um, bit of wiring up to the light bar that I need up under here. And I will just zip tie this all together and keep it nice and safe. So now we can connect the wiring harness and we can tidy up the wiring. So I'll just refit this trim now that I've run the wiring underneath it. We'll just make sure the wiring comes out under this thick tube here so it can run up the windscreen and clip it all in. Just got these little um, sticky backed cable tie mounts so you can get these from Bunnings or um, any sort of good auto store will have them and they just have a sticky back and then you can put a zip tie through them and secure wiring. So I'm going to run these up the windscreen just up the side of the windscreen here and then continue on all the way to the roof. The wiring run up the windscreen there, it's off to the side, it's in this black strip here along the windscreen so I'm not going to see it from inside the vehicle. Um, but I do want to tidy it up a little bit because I don't like the look of wiring hanging out um, like this up the vehicle. So I've just got a little bit of felt sticky um, wrap here and all I'm going to do is just wrap this plug connector in the wrap um, to tidy it up a bit. Perfect. I think that's pretty stealth, you can't see it. It hides it away and it's also going to protect it from any water that may get into it. So now I've finished running the wiring to the light bar. You can see it runs down the windscreen here, down along the windscreen to my little connector, which I've covered in felt, and then down in behind this trim, which goes down into the engine bay. So I've covered my wiring with a bit of conduit down here and then tied up the excess. So now we're ready to run the switch wiring. So what I'd recommend before doing this is just making sure that light bar works. So we'll put the fuse back in and we'll just test that the light bar actually turns on and off with this switch um, before we run it through the firewall. It works. You. Alright, let's run the switch. So don't forget to pull that fuse out again before we start playing with the wiring. Okay guys, so now we're into wiring up the switch. So there is a couple of different ways you can do this. So we can just leave the wiring harness how it is and the switch will operate just like this without any high beam input. Or the other option is to wire the switch up to the high beam. So when we flick the high beams on, the light bar comes on. But we can also control it from this switch. I usually like to wire them up to the high beams because when you want to use your light bar, usually you've got your high beams on um, and you don't want to be looking around for a switch, you know? So what I'm going to do today is change the wiring harness up a little bit because the way that it comes, it's wired up just to run off this switch um, solely. So what we need to do is we need to modify the wiring harness a bit. So there's a little white wire in here which goes to pin 30 on the relay. So this little white wire is meant to go in the car through the switch. Um, when you flick the switch it earths out and goes through the earth wire and turns the light bar on. So what we need to do is just snip the white wire off this pin 30 on the bottom of the relay. And we need to wire that white wire up to our high beam power supply. So that's the headlight wiring plug connector there. Um, so that's the pin that is the high beam um, switched voltage. So that's the one we need to wire our switch up to. So I've actually already installed a light bar to my vehicle. So there's the relay for my other light bar. So I've run a power supply wire already from the harness up here. So it's a lot easier to access up here. So I'm just going to solder it to this wire. But just so you know, you can um, pull that plug off and trace that wire down to the back. So you just take the conduit and the covering off the wire and then you can strip and solder your signal wire to that. All right, so let's get stuck into modifying this wiring harness so it works off my high beams. So I've got all my bits ready.
So now I've wired it up, now I just need to check that it works. So I'll flick my high beams on, and I'll flick my switch on, and now the light bar works. There we go. So now we've modified the wiring harness so that it works off the high beams, but you can also activate it on and off via the switch. Now we can run the wiring into the vehicle. So this is the grommet down here that I'm going to use to run the wiring through the firewall. So I've used it for a few other um, wiring harnesses, so for my other spotlights and the, my locker and stuff like that. So it's already got a little gash in it, which you can just put a um, slit in it with like a little razor blade, and then you just push your wiring through. So I'll do that now. So I've just run the wiring from through the firewall grommet up here, up behind the carpet. So I've just pulled back the carpet a bit and you can see the wiring running there. So I've just run it up there under the center console and over to the other side. So now we're in the driver's footwell. Um, you can see the wiring coming through there from under the center console. It comes down here and into the footwell. So I've just connected my plug um, back to this wiring and put the switch back on so I can turn it on and off. Now I'm just trying to figure out where to mount this switch. So I've got a bit of a dilemma in the MUX. I've run out of switch holds. So I've got quite a lot of switches already in the car, so all I'm going to do is um, just leave this wiring up here, zip tie it up behind there, and probably just put the switch um, into this little cup holder here until I figure out what I want to do with the switch. Um, but changing the switch over to like one of these style switches um, that fit the factory holes is quite easy. Um, you just snip the wiring off and wire in the new switch, and it comes with instructions exactly how to do that. So if you guys did just want to use this um, circular switch that the wiring harnesses come with, they are quite easy to install. All you need to do is get a stepper drill and you just pick a spot where you want it, make sure there's nothing behind it, you drill through the trim until the hole is the exact same size as the bottom section of this, so it goes in nice and snug, and then you slowly enlarge the hole till it fits really tightly in there. Um, but I've decided to not fit this switch to the dash. I just don't really like drilling into the dash to fit a circular switch. I'd much rather try and source uh, one of these style factory switches um, for in the centre there. So I've just tidied up all my wiring. So I've covered it in split tubing, zip tied it up, secured it away nicely and um, covered it in some felt tape there and it's looking really good. I'm really happy with how it's come together to run really nicely. So I do have one last tip for you guys on how to level your light bar. Before we do this, just make sure your vehicle is on a very flat surface, so in your garage or on a piece of concrete, and then we can start um, leveling our light bar so we get the best light output possible. So I'll just loosen off this side bracket on this side, just a little bit, so I can move the light bar. So now I can loosen this side as well, just enough so I can move it. And now I've got a little spirit level. So you can get these for a couple of bucks and they are perfect for lining up light bars. So you can even put these on your spotties. So put them on the front of your spotty and get them perfectly level. So making sure your lights are level is extremely important in how well they work and how far they project. So we'll just sit it along the front of the light like this in the center. And I'll just get it perfectly set. There we go. And now I'll just nip that up where it is. And just double check. A bit further back. And now we know we're going to get the best possible light output from this light bar because it's sitting perfectly level with the horizon. So now the light bar is all fitted. Now we can check out how bright this thing is at night. Okay guys, so now for the fun bit. Now we get to test the lights out at night. So this is Parker's. That's low beam. And now this is high beam. You ready? You can see on the hill over there, you can see that it's actually got light on it. You can see it lighting up over there. And that's probably a good, you know, at least probably a kilometre away. And you'll also notice that the light bar is, the light's only hitting the aerial, which is fine because it's black. It's not reflective. There's no light on the bonnet. So that's perfect because that light bar is set back a little bit. It means that I'm not getting a big reflection uh, off the bonnet, which is quite distracting. So I'll just go through the lights for you guys so you can see the difference. So this is low beam, standard low beam. That's standard high beam. It doesn't really do too much, it just projects the light a bit higher. And now I'll click on the little steady light bar. Lights up uh, right in front of the vehicle really well. It just doesn't have very good uh, light projection uh, right down the road. And then I can click on the 42 inch 
ox beam light bar on the roof, which really lights things up. You can see it projecting right out there onto the hill. So that's the ox beam light bar. That's the ox beam and now the steady together. And now the um, LED cog lights on and off. You can see they light up right in front of the vehicle. So with all those lights combined, the light output is just insane. And now this is what it looks like with all of my lights on. So that's with the Oxbeam 5D Pro Series 42 inch light bar on the roof. The little steady single row uh, 24 inch in the bull bar. And then I've got the two Oxbeam um, LED fog lights in there, which really light down real close to the car. And altogether, the light output is just insane now. So that Oxbeam 5D Pro Series light bar has really made the biggest difference. Like it's pretty insane how bright this thing is now. Okay guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down in the description and the comment section below a link to the Oxbeam 5D Pro Series light bar so you can check that out and I'll also link a couple of different tools that will make the job a hell of a lot easier for you. So I've also got a 10% off discount code for you guys for any of Oxbeam's lighting so you can jump over to their website, punch in this discount code and you'll save 10%. So I'll chuck that down in the description and also in the comments for you guys so you can save some cash. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for more full driving and accessory fitting videos. Cheers guys.